Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum, where today we're going to have the completion of the installation of our new Benpack Auto Stacker lifts. We have extended the run. We had four already installed. We now have a further three. This was always the dream here at the Sch Museum to have this storage wall. And Brad, I mean, you just got here and seen them. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, so I've been off for the last couple of days and actually haven't seen any of this installation apart from editing the previous video. <laughs> but seeing them in, it's like, Wow, we just have more and they're ready to go pretty much. Almost done? Almost done. Basically, they've all been tested, put into position. Obviously, there's the fire, final wiring and electrical and sign off and all of that kind of thing. The last front kick plate needs to be installed. These are the Autostacker A6Ws. They're the wider, very easy, low access, super perfect for the kind of cars that we're obviously storing here. And we've popped some of the cars back into their more normal positions. Other things happening today, by the way, before we get 14 cars loaded up on one wall. The Mini is being collected. Our long-term Mini is going to be departing. Also, the return of the Cupra, finally, with a new windscreen. That's been needed. Um, Tom has actually given the Lotus at least a little cleanup, looking much better, a little Firefly, than it did after many, many thousands of miles. And I wouldn't actually mind taking that out for a run at some point, because I've still not driven it since it was run in. But basically, the plan today is with this wall to end the day with 14 cars <laughs> that sounds ridiculous to say it. <laughs> All down this side, looking amazing. And I can't wait actually to see what that's like because I always had this plan. Storage side, museum side. We've got a great view of what the museum side looks like. And I should probably point out the Ford Lightning is plugged in and charged. I was going to say, do people know that's here? We'll touch on it later. It might have been on the Shmi channel already. We shall see exactly which way that's going to go. Basically, we're finally getting all of the rest of the Benpack Auto Stacker lifts installed. This is going to be amazing to see at the end. You know what? This is all happening vastly quicker than I think we anticipated for today. The guys are actually basically just cleaning and tidying up everything that's around, which means in not all that long, we're going to be moving cars. So call me crazy, but I'm planning this out to work out which cars can go up and which cars are going to stay down. You're crazy, Tim. Oh well, it is what it is. So I've got a whiteboard. I feel like engineering explained with a whiteboard behind me. I feel like we definitely could have used a better pen. Yeah, true. But so I'm right. just working out like which ones we're gonna put up top and how we're gonna make this look cool. Uh, which of the different cars are gonna go where? I'm gonna put, obviously numbered from right yeah. to left as we're looking at them. I'm gonna put the 675 here. The V8 Vantage Roadster. So that's actually an awkward one to put up top because of a single uh, automated clutch automated manual gearbox. It's actually a bit difficult to reverse it up a hill. And then we've got to mix up some colors. This is going to be like cars moving everywhere. Well, the Lusso is currently here, so I guess we should leave the Lusso here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So E500 and Clear go back on the end. Yeah, they'll come back in because they're the other side. Uh, we need to keep the Mini out because that's leaving. Uh, GT8, STO, goodness. Maybe if we put the GT8 here. Too much orange, blue, blue, orange. I don't know, maybe we put the GT8 there. We're gonna have GT here, Senna here. Then we've got STO and SF90. Yeah. Yeah, that works. STO can go on the end, bright and cheerful. SF90, there we right. go. Is 14, that right? Have I 14 cars on the lift. We'll leave the Lotus and the Jag because they're not technically my cars and the Lightning, of course. Is that all the cars we've got here right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's 14. 13, 14 next door. True. That is Done. 14 cars. All right, Perfect. so very shortly they'll be finished. I suspect the Mini's going to be going next, so let's see if they get here. It is time then to say farewell to the Mini, to hand back the keys. The Mini is about to be departing. The truck is here to collect it. It's been a car that I think we possibly haven't used as much as we thought we might. And I'll explain a bit more about that. I've used the Mini as a commuting car, effectively a small city car with fairly minimal range. Brad has used it a few times. I don't think Tom has ever driven it. But with a car like this, we figure the maximum range on a full charge is real world about 90 to 95 miles. So we can't take it on a journey very far away from base. You tend to use it for short hops to the shops, three miles here and there, maybe a commuting run, 10 miles. I can't do a full week of commuting on a single charge. Now we have over in the main side, obviously, the SeaTech charge storm connected to charger. So charging the car up alongside another EV is never an issue. I just found that 
I haven't really driven it as much as I thought I might. I love the idea of a city electric car. I never got the point of lugging a very big, heavy EV across the country, taking a two and a half ton car on a massive journey when your range isn't even that good anyway. I think this is much more suited, certainly to the current time, where you can charge it up quicker because it's a smaller battery, you can plug it in at home and get enough charge to run for the day, that kind of thing. And certainly the world we're currently in, just for what we do, and we have sporadic journeys in all sorts of different directions doing different things, I've not been able to get all of the use out of it as I want. Now, the big positives of it is that it drives like a Mini. It's a go-kart on wheels. It just flies around for driving around town. It's so small, nippy, instant torque with the electric and quite fun. I find it a little bit fidgety um, at the driving dynamics end, shall we say, but that is often the case with Minis. For now, however, I basically need to go take this out because the truck is awaiting to depart it from Museum. We've enjoyed having it. We've driven a thousand or so miles in total. Like I say, not that much because all it does is the 10 mile journeys, the five mile journeys here and there. So even if you drove it nearly every day, you would never do a lot of miles. When we want to go somewhere further afield, we've got the E500, we've also had the Cupra, we've got a couple of other cars obviously to use for those purposes. But let me pull this out so they can get it loaded and take it back towards base. We've very much enjoyed it. So a huge thanks to the team at BMW and Mini here in the UK for the long term running of this Mini Cooper S electric. It's time for the Mini to be loaded up, to be taken away. We've actually charged it to 100%. We had it on 100% in the main barn before taking it over to the other side, which I think is always quite fun, nice to be able to do, given we live in this different world with EVs when they're being collected. They can end up at the other end with a full range, a full whatever you call it. Anyway, it is here underneath a Wanner. Got a Wanner up top, tiny little thing. I will miss driving it around the city. I will certainly miss driving it around the city. It did what I needed it to do very well. Congestion charge exempt in the center of London, which you have to have a 100% EV vehicle to, to meet that, and ULEZ and LEZ and everything else that we have here now. But yeah, off it shall go, and we shall head back in, see how things are. Mini has gone, but the Lotus is clean, so let's rewind to that. Now, as you guys may have seen, the little Firefly is back. However, it's just done quite the European road trip and well, as you can see, got quite messy along the way. So we've got this one outside in the wash bay, got our products there and we're gonna get this one cleaned up. And there we are, covered in the lovely snow foam, just dripping off now. It's had its citrus rinse and now we'll get this one off, get onto the mitt wash and get this clean. Now, it's still ridiculous how generally when a car is covered in snow foam, can't really see much of the color where as you can see or you can still see all of the RAL 2005 so I'm gonna crack on with this one and get this thing looking as it should be everything is installed it's time to move cars Tom's gonna to have the honors basically after making my little plan and working out which six cars aren't here at the moment I've decided the order that we're gonna do this so we've got a whole lot of unplugging of all of the CTEC smart chargers I'm gonna do the DBS first which always sounds oh so sweet Lovely. So the DBS is going to go onto the previous lift, that's going to go on there. And then the first ever Shamima Beal, my Vantage Roadster, is actually going to go onto the first of the new ones, which is going to be quite fun. This should be a complete scatter bomb of colours and craziness. Um, Hopefully, quite smooth and easy to do. Yeah. This nice is going to involve tight. a lot of like guiding carefully. Yeah, but we'll make it work, we always do. I think as well, Tom's actually taken all of the CTEC smart chargers off already. So every single car that needs to move is ready to go, which is good. And if he hasn't, then you get to see it on video. I mean, these haven't, so we'll see it on video. You're good, straight back. It goes. Nice and easy. This one's Auto straight gear on. gearbox is definitely significantly easier. Done. Sweet. All right, one down. Only how many more? Uh, a lot. I mean, actually, 11 more to go. One down, 11 to go. Vantage Road to next. Not quite one down. One up first. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the look on Brad's face just then was priceless. <laughs> For a bit of background, I have delirium right now because I've been up until the early hours every day and the guys start at half seven, eight every morning. So it doesn't take a genius to work out by the time I've gone home and come back. I haven't slept very much recently. C'est la vie. I'm but he's done well. Day. Yeah, we're here. We're yeah. cracking on and this isn't the only stuff that's going on. We need to go and have an update with Nextdoor as well. 
um, because there's some stuff happening in there. But for today, arguably I should have done that while Tom went to get the next car. We know for the next one. Next, yeah, next car we'll do that. Yeah. We, we have an efficient that. process we can do with this. There we go. One down, next. <laughs> V8 Vantage. Right, one down, but one up. His face is as good as Brad's face. <laughs> Vantage it is. Here we go. So this is going to the end. This is gonna go on to the lift closest to the mezzanine. So that's lift number seven. The first of the new lifts that we're going to put into use. Tom's changing the seating position. That yeah. means someone short's been driving it. I drove it last, so. <laughs> Tom's smiling away, I think you like that one. Before anybody wonders why they can't hear him, it's because we've got mics on and we haven't given yeah. Tom a mic. We haven't given him one. <laughs> which is either a blessing or people are really upset. That smells of clutch, what I was saying earlier. That car does not like reversing uphill. Okay, you need to new way of doing it. this. You go over there to the... Uh... Oh yes. Yeah. So the next car is actually going to be the GTR Roadster down, down and off. So let me get this lift up. Um, first time using the brand new one for me. First time with a car on it, we're good to go. Got the thumbs up from the guys. That seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. It looks like it from here. I mean, I'd be worried if it, if it wasn't. The beauty of these is how easy it is. You literally just come here, stand at the back. You've got the individual power units to control each one. Know exactly what you're doing. Can choose how high it goes. We've got loads of clearance as well to the uh, main steels up in the roof. They're great. Genuinely great. Just takes a moment and the car will be up. And we can do it simultaneously. This one up. That one going down. Here we go. Teamwork makes the dream work. One up, one down. Touchdown. GTR Roadster ready to come off of lift number one. And I believe lift number seven is now in place onto its locks. Vantage Roadster up in its place. Oh, that's a good noise from here. Random football down there. Off she rolls. Got to watch out for the massive bonnet, but plenty of clearance. Rear wheel steer on this, which yeah. makes maneuvering in the barn very easy. It's one of the reasons why it was on the end one, just because it's so easy to get it back there. Yep, exactly that. Almost there. And she's We're in. in. This is great. These A6Ws just make life so easy. Yeah, that's what Tom can do. <laughs> Door. <laughs> now this has to stay in. <laughs> it's like having a mime, it's quite fun. Give, give us a mime. That's a no. You know what mime you'll get. GTR Roadster going up, and Tom is just removing the SeaTech smart charger. Well, temporarily removing it, because obviously these will go back on once we park the cars up at the end of the day. So round the back for some McLaren magic. If we can call it that. There she is. Into life and I believe that one is going lift number six. So the last one that is down on the floor. Double check each side, just make sure that we're sort of lined up as centrally as possible to each of the lifts. And then it rolls straight on up. It's amazing that even something like this, low supercar, will roll on nice and easily onto these lifts. It's great. Really, really great. I think we can put the lift back down. Yep, now it's on, lift down, and then lifts up. <laughs> We've had that joke. <laughs> different kind of lift. And then we need to run out and get the Clio and then the E500 and then start filling up underneath. LT on its way up top. Then we basically have a line. We don't have a line actually because we're still missing cars at the end, but we almost have a full line of cars up on the top, lots of color, and then just a bottom row to fill in and we are good. So I finally been allowed to speak again. Hello. Yeah, you've been given a mic. I have, I have, which is just slightly awkwardly there, I know. We've got two cars to get and Brad, I think you know which one you'll be giving the key to. I'm in the Clio, aren't I? You're in the Clio. Great fun. I'm gonna do a handbrake turn and Tim will never know. Do it. 
two silver beasts parked up kind of next to each other. But obviously that's where the mini was before it departed earlier today. Yes. Right. Into the Clio. Um, hopefully the camera doesn't go flying and break. Nice and slowly does it. Whee! And yes, I don't have a seatbelt on. We're not on the public road. Fully private land, just to clarify. Out of the exit. Oh, that spring doesn't sound good, but it's okay. You can definitely hear that broken spring, which is quite funny. As we roll around the side of this museum, time to, ooh, everything's creaking. That doesn't sound good. But um, yeah, let's go and reverse this into Schmuseum V1. Where am I going? I can see Tim waving his hand about. I assume that's my call to go past. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going past all the way to the end. We've had the camera swap after Brad's first drive in the Clio. Feast on wheels. No pressure, don't stall it. You got this. Straight back. Beast. Beast on wheels, right. Clio's up in the air. All good? All seven are up. Oh yeah. There's our top seven. Next up, in Tom's own words, the noisy one. The very noisy one. That is so loud. You actually have to raise your voice to talk over it. So this is now going somewhere. Where are we going? GTA underneath the Focus RS. So Tim's pop next door to run through a few bits. So I'm on guiding duties to make sure that all goes smoothly. I'm gonna let them get roughly lined up and then we can get it into place better. That needs tracing as well. So we're gonna sort that out. And just like that, it's quite hard to film and focus. And then there's that. Yeah, it's quite hard to film and focus on exactly what's going on here because we want to make sure that we're not hitting into anything, make sure the cars are as straight as we can get them, which I think I've done an okay job of, maybe. I'm never quite so good at this. Tom's kind of trapped in the corner. No, he's left the window open. Oh, he's left the window open. He's not trapped in the corner. That's fine. Time for some V12. Oh, what a noise. What a noise. Okay, I think this one's pretty much lined up. Again, if it's not, sorry Tim, it's gonna have to be adjusted, but this should come straight back. And then we should to work out where we can go to for the door to open. I would say about there. Let's see. It's pretty good, we can go more if we need to, but I'd say that's pretty perfect. Tom agrees, that is good. Next up, following this. good look at that all the way up that is the other reason as well obviously we've mentioned we went for the auto stackers rather than a four post because obviously one it looks nicer but actually having these doors open up like this without an extra post in the way just makes yeah. life so much easier especially having the wide ones for yeah. cars like this yeah exactly this fits in really well tom is uh, become a mime again <laughs> a mime or a meme do we make him a meme can, can we do that oh he makes himself a meme Super easy, super easy. It's nuts, isn't it? It's actually funny how easy it is. We've obviously got a little bit of practice at it now, but it's just kind of boom, one in. Every single door time. Door fully open, next. Yeah. It's a shame we don't have the SLS, but even the SLS's going doors open fully underneath. So STO and SF90, one electric, one very loud. Silently does it, no need for the engine. As good as the V8 sounds, we don't actually need it for this. E-drive all the way. This is wide. This is really wide. Don't forget to do the window. Again. I mean. <laughs> Has that happened more than once? No, 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 not at all. <laughs> not at all. Lambo cold start. We have a line. 
done it. 14 very colorful Skittles across seven Ben Pack Auto Stackers. Isn't it crazy just having these extra three in? That's still, awesome. Still room for something to go here in the future. I don't want to turn around just yet, because I've not actually seen it. Close your eyes. Keep walking this way. Keep, like, come this way. Your I just, eyes. I just, come I this way. I just want to get the moment of just... Oh, damn, that's quite cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said something else then, but that is really cool. Do you know what's bugging me? One thing bugging me. What, that the Lusso sticks out because it's so long? <laughs> the leaf on the front of the SF90. That's it. <laughs> One leaf. Nice, Tim. <laughs> Pedantry. But there we go. I wish you'd leaf it out. I wish I could cut that bit out, but I'm not going to. Well, look what's back. The Cupra has returned, crucially, with a new windshield, without a crack. Yeah, like the Ford GT, brand new windscreen, looking good as new. And thankfully, they actually came and picked it up, got that sorted out really, really quickly. Obviously, this is a long-term test car that we're running as the Museum's team car. So a big thanks to the Cupra team and all involved in that, because I've certainly had some difficult experiences with glass. The Ford GT one recently, they actually sorted that out really quickly, but before that, when the Taycan went about a year ago, it took a long time to track one down. When I did, uh, I had a crack in my AMG GTR, the original GTR windscreen, quite a few years ago now, probably three or four years ago. It took ages to track one down, and their specific right-hand drive, left-hand drive, and it was a right-hand drive car in the south of France. So you can imagine it took even longer. Anyway, we're actually going to head out with this. Um, Tom and I are going to take the Cupra to go for a supplies run to pick up some drinks, snacks, stuff to have here. Bits um, and pieces, as Tom would say. Pieces. Bits and pieces indeed. Give this a little run and uh, leave Brad to man the house. Yep, editing to do, as usual. And then we'll be back quite shortly. A few inches later. We're home. Welcome. It's like we left five seconds ago. Literally. Yeah. Welcome back. Half a second ago. Hello. I don't know. Alarm testing. Nothing to worry about. We managed to get a couple of bits and pieces. Oh my. This is more, Tom, this is more than we fitted in last time we did this, I think. Yeah, yeah. We decided to go slightly above and beyond because what we bought last time with all the, the guests we've had lately has actually gone down quite quickly. So we thought if we buy more, it lasts longer. Still water, sparkling water, Coke, Fanta, biscuits, cookies for Americans out there, biscuits. Biscuits. Bin bags, yeah. trash oh. bags, probably. Um, I like all why, are we doing it, why are we doing it American style? Cans of water. I, know, I know we have American viewers. There's loads of American people watching. Thank you to everybody in the United States and Canada and everywhere else. And we might have bought some expanding foam expanding just foam. for experimental purposes, shall we say. That sounds weird. Does it? Uh, for, for the... For, for the, the Clio. Works. For the Clio 1.2. <laughs> we're going to fill the Clio 1.2 with expanding foam. That's how we're going to put the spring back together. There you go. You're rigging it out. It's for building works. <laughs> <laughs> Experimental purposes. I'm experimenting with, can I keep the building in one piece? Mm -hmm. That would be a dangerous world. <laughs> well, if Tom built buildings out of expanding foam. He's already banned me from the hammers, don't worry. But anyway, I should probably put this down and help him with stuff, yeah. I found the goods. I love a good party oh, ring. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim. <laughs> I don't think Tim realised I was recording, as I just heard. You just get really excited. Do you know how much a packet of party rings cost? They should be like 50p. It's 50p. That's 50p. And you get that's like, four, 20 in a pack. That's 60 cents for the American viewers. Do you know how bad these are for you though? 25 per biscuit. I eat a whole pack of these sometimes. That's, that's a lot of calories, that's like... Sorry, where do you put the whole packet of those? I mean, I know where I put them. Where do you? <laughs> Confused. I want to give you a quick update on this side because, of course, there are no longer any cars here. Any cars that were here are now back over the other side. What's been happening here is all the quite uninteresting but very important stuff. So, for example, the intruder alarms, fire alarms and all the sensors that are now all up on the roof and all of that kind of thing all of the preparation for the cameras, because obviously there are certain security requirements for insurance and everything like that. And obviously just knowing what's going on, especially when this is a working space and a storage space, it's really fun to be able to just see all of that stuff as well. So basically that all takes time, costs quite a lot of money, but is absolutely critical. We wanted to get this side done. So this side is usable to the same level as that side when we originally moved in a year ago. Then we're gonna open it up. So at the moment, the scissor lift, I think, is plugged back in 
for charging, but it's going to be opened up roughly here with a doorway and then some stairs down, as I've said before. The other side is about 70 centimeters below this side, lower. So you can't just drive through. There's not enough space for a ramp or anything like that. Obviously I've known that since the very beginning, but this is all critical garage. I don't really know what to call it. Preparation before we can really get rolling and start using this space. I also want to clean it up, to do a big floor clean, because as you can see, it's not exactly the cleanest place in the world. And given that we're on a farm, there are lots of cobwebs and things like that up in the rafters. So we need to go through all of those and we need to use the expanding foam to seal up a few last little places, just the tiny little cracks and holes and things, but the holes through which things like spiders crawl, who then obviously make cobwebs and all of that. So that's kind of in the works for this side. That's more or less what we've got going on at the moment. For the time being, we obviously have the whole setup like this. Now, after the first, I think, wow factor of seeing all of the lifts, I am gonna pull the cars like the Senna and the GT and the STO and the SF90 back to the other side, where they'll be joined in the future by the GT Black Series, the SLS Black Series. I don't know which else we'll kind of see and probably change it around a little bit. So this is more the storage side. This is where cars like the GTR, the 675, the C63 Black Series, whatever it is that we've got here, kind of sit and look really nice, but still obviously usable. I've emphasized that a lot. This is not a museum in the sense of cars that just sit looking pretty and never going anywhere. It's just that it's cleaner. It's not a workshop. It's somewhere where everything will be kept looking very nice, surrounded by memorabilia, and there's so much to install. And I've talked so often about what we're doing with all of this, and it's taken a long time because there have been all of these distractions along the way in terms of events, travel, but also working on Barn 2 and the other side of it and everything with that. But now we're ready to make some progress. We're ready for this flow to really kickstart. And this is all kind of connecting when it comes to alarms and zones and stuff like that and cameras and configurations and how it's all going to work. It all actually ties together quite nicely. So I think for the time being, we're going to just enjoy looking at that a little bit more and then basically shuffle some things back to just get a different feel for what it's like. You know, what's it like when some of them are down, some of them are up and just moved around a little bit and probably pull the Cupra back out. And yeah, just see where the rest of the day takes us. Seeing as this channel is basically, it's almost a montage of us just moving cars around inside this museum. Um, we see many comments that that's all we ever do and that's basically all we ever do with a few other bits sprinkled around. But we're doing some more shuffling, lining a few of the museum side cars, I guess, for now, back over on this side of this museum. Not in permanent places, definitely not their final spots. I'm sure there'll be lots of revisions to make with the plans. But for now, little shuffle around, GT8 over, STO over, Senna over, and maybe 4GT2? Not 100% sure, but Tim will know exactly what he wants where. <laughs> I can't hear you. It's quite loud, that one. You don't expect it. Run, Tim. Run, Tim, run. The precision and how precise this has to be. C-Tech chargers all connected. Shuffle around basically complete, I think. Th there's only one more still to go. The Lotus that Tom has just parked, he's yep. doing that one and I'm gonna put one more extension connector on here. Yes, that makes sense. I like to line them up so that if you were to raise the lift, it's not gonna obviously snag or anything. And in the case of the 675, it plugs in up front, like yep. right at the front here. That's, I think, the same with the GTR Roadster. Yeah, but the battery's at, the at least just by the A-pillar. True, not all If you think about it here, here. It's, it's another meter and a half forwards to get to here, so. Very true. The beauty of having those extensions. And then it's gonna be a case of- A few bits to do this side, I think, and then- No, they're all done. Oh, I've done them. They're okay, all sweet. done. SF90, I'm gonna put in the halo spot, actually. Cool, so that can live in there. And then plug it in onto the main socket behind. Cupra goes out, which you're gonna take that for a run. Yeah. And almost there, I think. Nice and easy. The fun of this is I can just move it in electric. It is actually a nice benefit if you're just moving a car around an indoor garage that you don't have to start it. Yeah, no noise, no fumes, just, just easy. moves. And I am gonna say at this point that the channel might feel a bit like it's the moving cars around a garage channel. 
But that's actually quite a big part of what we're doing because every time we have some construction or some lifts being installed or a car being shuffled, going in, coming out for some reason, it's just part of life. It's just like garage life. Things have to move, right? Yeah. And garage life. I like that. This garage is garage life. life. This is Welcome. garage life. This is what we do. This is what it is. So, yeah, it's life. Give me a call start, Tim. <laughs> there we go. SF90 is plugged in. That's certainly the car I'm using all the time. I actually might park it there more often. We shall see. But yeah, I think we've done quite well. We've had a successful day and we have three more. Three, three, more. three more lifts. I, I keep thinking about other things to swap. Like the Lusso being so long would probably be better where the GT8 is and the GT... Not now. That's, that's for another day. We'll be here all night, Tim. Just we driving be, cars around in the garage if we do that. We would be here all night. So we've got another extension on the 675 and everything is good. And you know, what more can I say other than a huge thank you to both Ben Pack, who manufacture the auto stackers and also to LiftMaster who have been installing them here because they look the part. They are obviously the actual part to use as well. And a huge, huge upgrade to this space. I mean, having this extra storage potential, which I mean, take what we've got in here now and add another six cars. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like you look at it now and we are basically full. For and then you side. have to factor in that there's missing cars, things that you already own, things that are coming in the future, and it, it adds up. Yes, it adds up. And yes, obviously, there's a whole other side with a whole lot more space. But I'm trying to forward plan here, and I know what in a year or two it's going to look like. So we're going with it. This is what we need. Yeah, absolutely mega. Anyway, we're all exhausted. It's been a hot day, completely tired, but very, very happy with the result. So that's it for now. Until next time.